The Capstone Dungeons, along with World Tiers 3 and 4, represent a significant bump in Diablo 4's difficulty. Furthermore, they unlock new rewards and endgame content. At World Tier 3, you gain access to both Nightmare Dungeons and Helltides, along with being able to drop Sacred Items, which have a higher power and therefore better stats than regular items. For World Tier 4, you get special Torment-specific uniques, more powerful Ancestral Nightmare Dungeons, and Ancestral items whose power can surpass 800. At the same time, the game doesn't do a good job of preparing you for the difficulty jump, especially not when you complete your capstone dungeon at 10 plus levels under the recommended. So today, I'm going to go over what you should do to prepare for your capstone dungeon, and then what to do to keep progressing forward smoothly afterwards, since this is a topic that I've gotten a lot of questions about, and I haven't seen any good resources to direct people towards, especially not resources that aren't specific to, well, one build, which probably doesn't help you if you're not playing that build. And speaking of, if you want to know more about the build I'm playing, I'm going to be coming out with a video on it in just a couple days, so be sure to get subscribed, that way you won't miss it, and leave a like while you're down there. That said, on to the first topic, how to prepare for your level 50 capstone dungeon, where you fight a necromancer. Going into the fight, you should aim to be at least level 45. Technically, you can be lower, but you won't be able to equip most of the items you find afterwards, so might as well grind for a bit. This is also a good time to grab the rest of your skill points and some Altars of Lilith by taking each zone reputation up to three. Kill some mobs along the way, maybe complete dungeons for any legendary aspects you're missing, then imprint those key aspects so that your build functions at its best. You should also look to collect favors for the Tree of Whispers as you do. Each cache you turn in has a high chance to give you legendary items, which is a great way to get drop-only legendary aspects. With your skill points and aspects, the fight shouldn't be too difficult, but now's a great time to go over to your blacksmith and upgrade key items to two out of three. This won't be expensive, though if you're looking to save materials in gold, just upgrade your weapons as you'll be replacing most things quickly after this anyway. You just need the power to get through the capstone dungeon itself. After completing the capstone dungeon, head to the statue of Anarius in Kyovashad, and you're able to enter world tier three. You now wanna replace everything you're wearing but you should prioritize replacing your weapons with sacred items as soon as possible. Sacred weapons are a huge DPS gain. Don't worry about the stats or aspect, just go with the first thing you drop. This is a great time to focus on open world content, gamble your obols, and collect favors for the Tree of Whispers until you get enough weapons. Then head over to Nightmare Dungeons because you wanna start dropping and leveling up glyphs. Glyphs are an important part of a Paragon board system, which is a significant portion of your endgame power. Glyphs level up over time, which requires a lot of dungeon grind, and get significant power increases at level 15. You'll want to start leveling glyphs as early as possible, that way you'll have them at 15 plus when you need them later. At 15, they get a radius increase, which means more stats in radius, which significantly amplifies their effectiveness. This is actually one mistake I made. Instead of leveling up a couple of key glyphs to 15, I leveled everything a little bit and honestly struggled for a long time pre-70 just because I didn't have the power for my glyphs and absolutely should have. Speaking of, the next capstone dungeon is level 70 and it unlocks World Tier 4 Torment. This is when you truly enter the endgame. Enemies are significantly more dangerous, there's more elites, they hit much harder, and personally, I found the damage done to be problematic until I upgraded my gear. Don't do the level 70 capstone dungeon at 58, by the way, I speak from experience on this. Even if you can, it's just gonna be miserable afterwards unless you're playing in a group. Now, the best way to prepare for your second capstone dungeon is make sure you have all of your builds required legendary aspects, upgrade your gear to three or four out of five, and try to get to around level 70 so you have a good amount of access to Paragon boards. Also, complete level five renown in at least a few zones, this will get you between 4 and 20 extra Paragon points, which does add quite a lot of damage and defenses. That way, not only will you have an easier time with the Capstone Dungeon, but you'll have an easier time with the World Tier 4 content after you complete it. Speaking of, after you beat Elias again, it's time to head into a Helltide and grind. You'll be pretty weak without Ancestral Gear, as the modifiers are significantly more potent for most slots. Luckily, Helltide chests have a high chance of dropping an ancestral item, and they allow you to target the slots you're missing. Plus, Helltides have a healthy amount of player participation, so you'll have help for the more challenging fights. Play safe, hunt for upgrades, and try your best to avoid dying. As a note, 
Jewelry, uh, rings and amulets specifically, don't appear to gain additional value from being ancestral over sacred. So really good sacred jewelry is completely fine to keep. It should also be noted if an item has good mods but poor rolls, and it's around item level 700 to 724, you can upgrade it of a blacksmith to exceed item power 75. At this point, you'll be able to re-roll things, bumping stuff up a tier and potentially resulting in a better item. After completing your second capstone dungeon, don't be afraid to grind more gear or renown on world tier 3. I know it can be tempting to just jump into the new content as soon as possible, but if you're dying constantly or can't kill anything, it really won't be worth it. And after you're comfortable in the open world, it's time to take on some higher tier 20 plus nightmare dungeons, as those have significantly better drops, and personally, that's where I found most of my unique items. Now, like I mentioned in both my tips and tricks video, or my endgame guide, you can check both of those out in the card after this, and they'll be down in the comments as well. One of the best ways to prepare for World Tier 4 is also to group up with some friends. Maybe your build has a lot of damage but poor defenses. Well, someone else might have a lot of defenses and good CC, but lack the single target damage to kill enemy bosses, or even tanky elites. This way, when you team up, you're able to cover for their weaknesses, and they're able to cover for yours. This is kind of like finding random people to help you in the Helltide, except way better since you can actually talk to them and coordinate with them. This is also hugely important when clearing dungeons as quickly as possible, since most of the time dungeons have objectives like kill three of this thing, or find multiple keystones, all that kind of stuff. Well, if you have a couple of other party members, you can split up and do it much more efficiently. Unfortunately, the loot isn't really pulled together, though if a legendary item drops it will be sent to your stash automatically. Where the power really comes in is completion speed. More mobs killed per hour, more drop chances, and of course, more glyph levels since glyphs really are going to be an important part of your endgame progression. And so hopefully, you now feel fully prepared to take on your first or second capstone dungeon. Or maybe you already cleared both and wanted to know what to do next. If you aren't quite at that point yet and want to come back and review the tips later, you can always come back later. Maybe you looked at the first capstone dungeon section. All right, that helped you. Now you need to grind for a couple days. You'll come back and do your second capstone dungeon. Rewatch that section of a video. And from there, you should feel fully comfortable to take on Diablo 4's endgame. Though there's one thing I didn't talk about, and that's the third capstone dungeon, where you fight level 100 Uber Lilith. This is extremely difficult and honestly felt outside the scope of this video, as there's a good chance only the best builds and only the best players will ever complete this fight. Though maybe I'm underestimating just how powerful characters get with fully maxed out gear and glyphs. So feel free to comment below if you want to see a dedicated guide for that fight at some point in the future. And with that said, I'm curious, where are the points in Diablo 4 where you've struggled so far, where you said, I don't know what to do next and I don't think I can progress further? Be sure to leave those down in the comments below. And if this video helped you get past one of those, don't forget to leave a like and share it with a friend who may also be struggling. That's it. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. If you want something else to watch, there's going to be a video on screen right now. Or you can check out my tips and tricks for more mistakes to avoid, my endgame guide to know a little bit more about each of these endgame content types. Or if you prefer reading rather than watching, then I'll have a link to several resources over at Maxwell GG that can help you get ready for and complete your endgame capstone dungeons. With that said, thanks again, good luck with the Demonic Slaughter, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.